Okay, I want to do a little video here, just real quickie, of uh, how I slice rings on the table saw, segmented rings like this, into small, thinner rings. Uh, I've done it many different ways. You all know the ways, you know, you, you uh, put it on sticky back tape and on a board and run it through there and then hope the tape don't don't let go, do them on the bandsaw, uh, any of those ways, they never really, they're not perfect, they all have issues. So I went online and I got looking for uh, how to slice small rings on a table saw and there's only one, one guy out there, it was Alan Stratton, who had built a, a fixture or jig to cut rings and uh, so he I looked at it watched the video and his his idea is exactly the same as my idea only his was just a little bit more bigger slightly more complicated and uh, so this is my version of his he gets all the credit for the the method this is just my simpler design of, of what he has so the, this is the this is the jig here all it is is a a 90 degree mdf piece angle made up okay and this is cut this surface and this surface is cut parallel to the so it goes in here like this, okay, and the fence, it's up against the fence when you run it through, and the way it's used is, I have a, I have a threaded bolt here because as you cut the rings down, you need to keep adjusting the size so you're, your nut will go on there. This is 3816 and just a little 3816 knob I had on hand. So the way it works is you put the threaded rod through the hole here. I put a washer on there just for that goes through there. Your ring goes through here. I let it set on one flat. Here's the hole down. All it is is a piece. Now you could make, probably will need to make different lengths of these for different situations or different size rings. And I just put a little level on top of it so that I can keep it straight so I don't run into it with my saw blade. So Put it on there like that with your ring. Get it just rough level, nothing important, really important. Tighten it up. And in order, whatever size rings you want, in this case, I'm going to end up with 1 8 ring, 1 8 thin or thin, 1 8 thick rings. Okay, so I'm going to cut them like at 3 16ths and then I will put them on my drum sander and take them down to 1 8th or even, you could even go down to whatever you need, 16th. If I was going to make 16th rings, I would cut probably maybe 90,000 to the maximum of an eighth of an inch rings off of there. So I use this, which is from my wedgie sled uh, stop. And you just take the stop, you can make any stop you want, and set it up. And this is a 3 16 spacer I have. And you put that between the saw blade. Put that between the saw blade. And whatever thickness you want, Put it, set it up to the saw blade. That way, now you bring your fence up. So it bumps, the ring bumps against your stop, and that will give you consistent cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and do one here. Oh, 
really cut this saw off in between. Well, now that I have the ring at 180 degrees, I just need to, you don't always need this, but I'm going to put that in there. That way you do, it'll hold it good. I'm going to turn the ring 90 degrees. You can tell where that is because you can see the both ends of your saw cup. Now you need to put a shim stock. This is a thin curved blade, which I like because it does it gives you that extra material versus using a uh, one eighth thick or uh, one eighth curve. So I put these down in like this. Tighten those up. Keep them, keep them up above the saw blade. Good idea. I'm, also, I didn't mention, but I had this handle on here that uh, I felt the need for a handle. So I had one of these laying around. I just screwed it down to, to this plate. If you have something like this hanging around, you could use that also. Anything to make a handle because you'll it, it just feels good. It helps me keep pressure against the fence. So here we go. Okay. Now I have to turn this a hundred and a hundred and eighty degrees. Kind of left my pencil over there, so I just make a little mark here before I now I'm going to turn it 180 degrees, and the little mark tells me when I'm at 180 degrees. So there it is, there level it up. Oops, I got the shims. So there's the first ring. Cuts it pretty good. Once in a while you got a little step, but I'm sanding, got to remember, I'm sanding those down to about one eighth of an inch thick. Um, so now put this back on. Kind of level, not perfect. Okay, now, see I have a, can't probably see it, but I got a little gap in there now, so I just move the fence up again, boom, like that. And go ahead and pop. Put the shim in.
Okay, that's that's it. The last ring, the little thick. I could slice one more time if I wanted to get it even, but that's what I do. And I have done many, many, many of these rings, splitting rings. Here's a whole batch I did here. Okay. And here's, a, here's another batch I did, okay. What I'm doing with all these rings, I'm making eight or ten bowls like this, okay. So this would be the top ring, and these would be the divider rings here in between the things. So that's... That's a good place for uh, making these rings. Some people might want to try to segment them, and, and that's fine. You could do that. I'm not sure which way is faster. I kind of think for the real thin, ring, thin rings, this is faster. Um, particularly if you want to do 1 16th or something, you're, I, I'd have a hard time gluing those up for segmenting. So. That's it. That's my jig. So thank you for watching.